difficult a peak to surpass. All that and more coming up on tonight's edition of the News Track. Char So Par is now Modi's official war cry. Open declaration of BJP's biggest mission. Modi sets massive 370 target for BJP alone. भारतीय जनता पार्टी को 370 सीट अवश्य देगा। How realistic is this epic poll target? Real possibility or psychological warfare? Can Modi machine really deliver 400 seats? Big focus on news track. Let me take you through the headlines I'm tracking this evening. Uttarakhand Uniform Civil Court Bill tabled in the State Assembly. The bill makes registration of live-in relationships mandatory. Non-compliance could lead up to six months in jail. It also bans polygamy and halala. Ajit Pawar wins round one of the Pawar vs Pawar fight. Election Commission says party name NCP belongs to the Ajit Pawar faction. Sharad Pawar to give three alternate names for his faction by 4 p.m. tomorrow. The Postman Directorate vs the AAP showdown escalates. Atishi accuses the probe agency of destroying evidence. ED calls AAP charges malicious. May take legal action against the party. Political dog fight over Rahul Gandhi's video feeding biscuit to a dog. BJP accuses the Congress MP of giving dog biscuits to party workers. Rahul rubbishes the charge, says he was just helping the dog. Maxi fire at a firecracker factory in Harda in Madhya Pradesh. 11 are dead, over 100 injured. Chief Minister Mohan Yadav takes stock. Abki Bar 400 Par is now the clarion call of the BJP. The unofficial slogan has now got the Prime Minister's stamp of approval. Who predicted that the BJP will win 370 seats and the NDA will cross the 400 mark in the upcoming general elections? The Prime Minister's prediction has expectedly raised political temperatures with the Congress and other India Alliance members asking, are the EVMs being fixed? Abki Bar official slogan now sanctified as a formal war cry of the Modi machine speeding towards the 2024 election Prime Minister's speech in Lok Sabha on Monday provided the BJP a turbo boost The Prime Minister also predicted 370 seats for the BJP in the upcoming general elections. मैं आम तौर पर ये आंकड़े आंकड़े के चक्कर में नहीं पड़ता हूँ, लेकिन मैं देख रहा हूँ देश का मिजाज एनडीए को तो 400 पार करवाई के रहेगा, लेकिन भारतीय जनता पार्टी को 370 सीट अवश्य देगा। But the Prime Minister's poll prediction has the opposition up in arms. 
The Congress says the only way BJP will win 370 seats is if it rigs EVMs. चुनाव होने की पहले मोदी जी को कैसे पता लगता कि 370 आ जाएगी? जिस दावे के साथ तो कहते हैं उसमें लगता है कि EVM में मोदी जी की कोई हाथ चलेगी. Other India allies are echoing similar sentiment. अब अगर एक्सेप्ट 370 बोल रहे हैं और एनडीए चार तो इसका मतलब रिगिंग का कंप्लीट हो गया काम इतना ईवीएम सेट हो गया मतलब देश के आप प्रधानमंत्री हैं अब कहिए ना कि हम भारी मोहम्मद से आएंगे एक्सेप्ट नंबर 370 जब आप कहते हैं ना तो शक होता है उनके पास तेलस्मी चराग है वो जो बोलते हैं हो सकता है वही होगा For the Modi juggernaut, the BJP's victory is a foregone conclusion. They see the challenge as how big their victory can be. Bharatiya Janata Party will win 370 seats and NDA would be crossing 400 seats. So I think that's a very tall, uh, uh, that's a very good idea, very great idea and he's very confident about it and so are we. Uh, the way things are going in the country under his leadership, I don't think uh, we would be uh, not achieving uh, these two numbers. I think that 400 is a good idea. We have already done it today. My Prime Minister is not in the country. वो देश के युवाओं की महिलाओं की किसानों की गरीबों की गरीब को एक जाति मानकर गरीबों की वो बात करते हैं द स्टेज इज सेट फॉर स्टेट ऑफ वॉर 2024। ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टुडे सो दिस इज अ rallying cry can the rallying cry be turned into reality रिमेम्बर फॉर द बीजेपी टू गो फ्रॉम अबाउट 300 टू uh, 370 requires 70 more seats and they'd maxed out in most parts of the north, the east, the west where they are strong and in the south the BJP isn't strong and therefore where will they find the seats to go from 280 to 370 which is 90 extra seats. Also is 400 plus for the NDA possible from a data perspective. To talk about this I'm joined on this broadcast by Yashwan Deshmukh, lead cephalogist founder at Seavoter. Uh, I want to tell our viewers that uh, this is a very busy week for Yashwant and his team because he'll be with us in Delhi Thursday, Friday and then Saturday, Sunday as well as we bring to you the results of the India Today Mood the Nation opinion poll. Uh, that's the big tracker. We've had multiple calls across party lines at the highest levels. Everybody's wanting to know uh, kya hai Mood of the Nation where the only person who really knows at this time is Yashwant and he's not telling uh, anyone anything just yet. So Thursday and Friday Mood of the Nation opinion poll coming up. Amitabh Tiwari. Uh, is with us, a uh, well-known political strategist. Uh, we've got Sanju Verma, national spokesperson of the BJP. She's joining us on this broadcast, as also is Rohan Gupta of the Congress. And we have Dr. Sandeep Shastri, uh, a well-known cephologist at Lokniti, who's joining us from Bengaluru. I want to go across first to Yashwan Deshmukh. And I tell our viewers that while, of course, a lot of the polling for Mood of the Nation is already on, is at its last stages, in several places it's been complete. For this purpose, we will look only academically at what is theoretically possible, right? So we're not getting into what the poll is saying, we're just looking at what the past data suggests. So, and on the basis of past data, Yashwan, from about 280 odd till 370, getting those 90 extra seats, do you think given that they maxed out in the west, in the east, in the north largely. Do you think that's possible or do you think it's just to basically scare, intimidate the opposition? Well, uh, one thing which I have learned in, uh, in 28 years of studying the elections is nothing is impossible in politics, Rahul. Because within the last 10 years itself in Delhi itself, we have seen 7-0 for the BJP and then 67-3 for Amadi party, then again 7-0 and then again 65. So, uh, elections are definitely unpredictable in that form. In, uh, you know, everything is, uh, anything is possible in that way. Having said that, Rahul, yes, you are right that we, if the BJP has to take this uh, uh, target seriously, they have to not just saturate their own performance, even take it beyond. Uh, wherever the slight two, three seats, like, you know, 27 out of 29 that they won in, in uh, uh, MP, they need to win 27 out of 27. In UP, 80-0 kind of thing, you know, and, and so on and so forth. So all those states, wherever they were one, two, three seats were left, they need to win 100%, 100% strike rate in all those places. 
Then what we do not know at this point of time, Rahul, is even in the places where the alliances are fixed, how many seats BJP is going to contest? For example, in Maharashtra, they have said 26 is the number that they are going to contest. In Bihar, after the recent episode, we are being told that JDU will not be given the kind of seats that they were given in 2019 and the BJP will be contesting more. If yes, how many more? Those kind of uh, factual information we will know only when we will know. We don't know yet. Yes, there is a growth opportunity for BJP in the greenfield states, which are largely three, if I may say so. One is Telangana, one is Odisha and one is West Bengal. When I say greenfield states, in many of the states like in West Bengal, they have already scored big in the last Lok Sabha election, but it's a question of even bigger going from here to where. So we need to look into the total saturation plus the possibility. And when you look into those saturation plus the possibility, it's not impossible. Improbable? Yes. Difficult? Yes. But saying that it is impossible, I would take that thing back because I remember in, 2000, uh, in 1984, when India Today published uh, that Rajiv Gandhi is crossing 400 seats, everybody said it is impossible, but it wasn't as the results came out. So, no, but there's a very big difference between the 84 election, which was held in the aftermath of then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi's assassination, which is largely a sympathy election, and Prime Minister Modi being in office for 10 years and now going to the polls. So the two are not compared. One is a very emotional election, the other is based on the man's performance and what the voters of the country think of this. Rohan Gupta, I was at a Congress lunch this afternoon and many of the leaders who were present there from the Congress and the other opposition parties already seem to have conceded defeat. And you know what this, and I saw you often in Ahmedabad during the Gujarat Assembly elections last year. And what I felt was very similar. You know, you know, I had so many chats. It, in Gujarat, the Congress just didn't put up a fight. And it seemed as if they weren't interested for whatever reason. They didn't campaign hard, they didn't fight hard. And in the end, the BJP ended up with 156 out of 182 seats. Are we potentially seeing a similar scenario where party after party, leader after leader, just begins to concede that hum to harne wale, Modi is coming back. And the moment you do that, whatever effort you could have made in some marginal seats where you could have possibly won against the NDA, you start losing those. So winning bandwagon effect comes into place. And what arithmetically seems very difficult, getting these from 300 to 370 requires 70 extra seats. Where will they come from? That's a very difficult question to answer. But a way gets found because the Congress concedes defeat and you come from Gujarat, you've already seen this happen once. I think, uh, uh, Rahul, if you if are reminding me of Gujarat, I think same time Himachal elections were there, right? And Congress Party won Himachal elections. So we cannot say that Congress Party is no, considering... I think you're understanding no, my question not, by pretending a, not to un understand. Me. No, once again, Rohan. No, I'm no, not I talking about point. Himachal. In I, I Himachal, Sukhu, Mukesh, Agniyotri, they all fought the election. I'm saying, I'm talking specifically about your home state of Gujarat where you were involved in the campaign. Where you know that the That's Congress didn't fight. And if the Congress didn't fight, the BJP ended up with 156 seats. My question is, can something with similar that. happen Rahul, in the Lok Sabha elections? Rahul, I don't agree with that Congress didn't fight. Yeah, maybe the issues on which we fought in Gujarat, maybe issues the way we fought uh, elections in uh, uh, Himachal, where we could keep the elections on local issues more. And Gujarat, somewhere we could not, we were not successful. So I don't see that we were considered, we have considered defeat in Gujarat. Maybe our strategy was wrong. That's what I'm trying to tell you. If same time, same election, same period, if one state we are winning and one state we are losing, it's not that we are conceding. It may be our strategy is wrong. Now, coming back to your point, and I was just going through the numbers uh, given by uh, Yeshwan Bhai, 5% swing takes Congress to 97%, to 97 seats. And the way things are right now, Rahul, if I compare those with 2019 post uh, Pulwama, the kind of atmosphere which was created, and we have seen PM's uh, uh, clips uh, talking about Pulwama attack and asking votes. So it was 100% an emotional atmosphere. I don't see that kind of atmosphere. That was the best possible for BGP under any circumstances, number one. Number two, we have seen Rahul India shining campaign in 2004 of BJP where nobody was even considering Congress party. Forget about this number. We were, we were not even considered this number in 2004. Congress party is working smartly across the India, whatever our streaming committees, the candidate selections process are going on. Our campaign is there, Rahul Bharat Jodo Yatra is going on. Things are happening. Okay. So let me put that question you. to Sanju Varma of the BJP. Sanju, the 
opposition would hope that this is India shining once again. That Pramod <laughs> Mahajan so convinced Adwani ji, Vajpayee ji, and everybody in the BJP that they were winning that they started believing their own myth. They started believing their own invincibility, and in the end, the UP ended up forming a government. The likes of Ron Gupta would hope that this is just, you know, BJP wanting to believe something because it wants to believe. There is rural distress. Uh, there are problems which the opposition thinks that they can capitalize on and actually do better than anybody who is watching at this time might anticipate. You know, uh, Rahul, um, I think you have excellent political judgment. And if you say that, you know, you got the sense after taking, talking to Congress uh, members at a luncheon today that uh, they have all but uh, given in and succumbed to the fact that uh, 2024 is lost for them. I quite believe it, and not because it suits uh, the BJP. I'll tell you why we are very confident. You know, I've heard you often say, and uh, you know, this is what uh, many uh, political pundits say also, that the one very important thing in politics is momentum. You know, when there is a momentum, it's very difficult to break it unless there is a black swan event. Now, look at the Congress. It has not been in power in West Bengal since 1977. It has not been in power in Madhya Pradesh for 20 plus years. It has not been in power in Goa for more than 1, 5, 15 years. It has not been in power in Uttar Pradesh for more than 31 years. It's not been in power in Uttarakhand for close to a decade. So the first point is the momentum is certainly not in the Congress's favor. Point number two, uh, you know, I remember after your last Mood of the Nation uh, poll, uh, you very categorically said, and these numbers are in the public domain, that 5 to 52 percent of the people sampled said that they see Narendra Modi coming in as the Prime Minister for the third time consecutively, and only one six, 16 percent uh, saw Rahul Gandhi as the next Prime Minister. But more importantly, I was enthused by the number that 63 percent of your sample said they are happy with Narendra Modi's performance. So I think that speaks volumes about his track record. The third point, and I will end with this, I always say that the Congress is excellent when it comes to garnering vote share. But when it comes to translating vote share into winnable seats, the Congress completely loses the plot. And I will just give the example of three states without being verbose. The Congress had a vote share of 32%. In Gujarat, Lok Sabha 2019, the BJP had a vote share of 62%. We won 26 out of 26 seats. Okay. Despite a 32% vote share, the Congress got zero seats. In Rajasthan, okay. the BJP got 24 okay. out of Fair 25 enough. I want to go across now, Amitabh Tiwari. Amitabh, you've been looking at this uh, from a cephalogical perspective. All rhetoric aside, do you think 370 is mission possible or impossible? The impossible is possible in politics. And uh, as Sanjuji has mentioned, the key word here is momentum. After 3 0 uh, defeat in the Hindi heartland, wherein the Congress was supposed to win Don't at least two, after the uh, Ram Mandir inauguration and after the India bloc, which has fallen apart, what has given, what it has given is that it has given the momentum to the BJP. Now, if we look at the numbers, hardcore numbers, BJP was runner up on 72 seats in 2019. If it adds 5% vote share in these 72 seats and the winner loses 5% vote share, then BJP adds 39 more seats to its tally. So it becomes from 303, it becomes 342. Where do these 39 seats additionally come from? 12 uh, are likely or hypothetically to come in from uh, West Bengal, 8 from UP, 6 from Odisha. So these are the states where the BJP could gain because of the momentum which it has acquired. That's number one. Secondly, when we say that the BJP has maxed out in the Hindi heartland, we forget that BJP has won 80% of the seats in UP. There are 16 seats up for the upside for BJP there. 16, not, it's not a significantly lower number. Then you have one or two seats in Jharkhand, one seat in Bihar, one seat in Chhattisgarh. So the Hindi heartland itself gives it 23 seats. 23 seats. On an additional basis, if this momentum is able to be maintained, 
so 342 it could reach only by a swing of 5% with the ghar wapsi of nitish kumar nda is back to its tally of almost 350 so from an alliance perspective also it is sitting at around 350 seats so if it's able to hold on to the voucher and the seats it needs 50 additional seats to cross this 400 mark or jo vote padta hai to padta hi hai humne dekha in 1984 ka example diya yashwant ji na of course wo alag baatein thi lekin impossible to nahi hai jis tarah se opposition is in complete disarray allies after no, allies there is nothing that's gone sandeep shastri in favor of the opposition since the verdict came out in the heartland states where the congress lost it's almost as if everything that could have gone wrong for the opposition has gone wrong everything that could have gone right for the government has gone right the winning bandwagon effect the undecided uh, neutral kind of voter who can go this way or that how significant do you think they will be if this idea gets seeped deep into society that the bjp is winning how much of an impact could that make? Arithmetically, Amitabh has demonstrated that they do get to 340. If they max out completely in the heartland, you could end up at around 365. You're already inching quite close to the 370 number. But that basically requires everything that can go right to go right for the BJP and NDA and everything that can go wrong to continue to go wrong for the opposition. Sandeep? Uh, yes, Rahul. Uh... I think, the, I think the Prime Minister's speech yesterday was an indication of that attempt to push towards 370. The positive points he tried to present about his government and the way he attacked especially the Congress and left some space for the regional parties. I think that clearly indicates the way forward to 370. Uh, while agreeing generally with Amitabh ji, I'll just make two points. One. I think even in Modi ji's own projection yesterday, he sees less of the non-BJP NDA. Last time they were 50, 353 was NDA, 303 was BJP. But this time by his own expectation, he talks of 370 BJP and 400 NDA. So he's looking at from 50 going down to 30 for the non-BJP NDA and the increase of the BJP. This, I think, is an important factor we need to budget into our analysis. My point number two, Rahul, uh, Amitabh ji talked about specific states. I will talk of, a, of three bunch of states. For me, one bunch of states is UP, Bihar, Maharashtra, and West Bengal. Why am I putting these four states together? These are four states where BJP would want its tally to increase. As uh, other commentators have said, in Bihar, in Maharashtra, the BJP is going to contest more seats than last time and give less to its NDA allies. And it would hope to do much better in all these four states. Then you have the four states where they had last time maxed out. Gujarat, Rajasthan, Haryana and Madhya Pradesh. The one or two seats left there, they would want to mop that up also. And because of 22nd January, I think the momentum is being built up in those states too. And finally, the last set of four states, Odisha, Telangana, Karnataka, and Assam. I think these are the four states they are looking at. If Amitabh ji talked about reaching 342, I think they are looking at these four states to go to the number the Prime Minister has projected, which is the number of 370. Can I, can I so, just point out one all big the problem uh, with the analysis that the BJP has of reaching 370, which is that you now have so many allies on board. Remember, in a state like Bihar, you have the Lok Jan Shakti Party, you have Jitendra Ram Manji, you have Upendra Kushwaha. Uh, you have so many little parties and at this time, there's talk about whether the RLD comes on board uh, in Uttar Pradesh. You have Rajbhar, you have Nishad. So with all these little parties, you know, the question is you have to be able to fight to win. The BJP will ultimately have to make allowances, Sanju Verma, for these regional parties, the smaller local parties. And if you keep giving a few seats to them, how do you max out? Because those, those two impulses are contrary. One is the impulse to maximize your own seats. B is to have a broad coalition. Both those are impulses that operate in different directions. 
you know rahul i don't know why you cut me short when i was giving my introductory comments be that as it may you know you raised a very valid point and while uh, yashwan deshmukh and uh, amitabh tiwari have given their own uh, uh, statistics i would just like to add where is the bjp going to get those extra seats from i have something very interesting to tell you there are about 10.45 crore tribal voters and you know this is data that is out in the public domain just from the three hindi heartland states that we won recently chatisgarh in lok sabha 2019 we won 17 17 tribal seats from our earlier score of 3 in lok sabha 2014 in madhya pradesh we won 24 tribal seats from our earlier score of 1616 in lok sabha 2014 and in rajasthan we won 12 tribal seats from our lok sabha tally of 9 seats in 2014 overall our vote share from the tribal seats was 65% the vote share of congress okay. was 29% so this extra uh, number of seats are going to come from tribal dominated areas because don't forget that when it comes to obcs the bjp is already reached close to saturation point we had a vote share of about 32% in lok sabha 2009 that went up to 47% in lok sabha 2019 in terms of obc vote share but the tribal vote share is something okay. that the bjp so, Sanju, is going to Sanju capitalize is on sanju is answering my question so let me put that same question to yashwan deshmukh yashwan the reality is when you've got so many local parties in the states now on your bandwagon you have to give them some seats and those two impulses one to accommodate your allies b to try and maximize uh, the number of seats that you can end up with those two impulses operate in different directions absolutely rahul and that's why i said it's not just about the nda it's about the number of the seats bjp is going to individually itself contest on that also needs some clarity if they really want to go about it i was just going through the states and we are talking when amta was uh, saying you know uh, it's like saturation is literal saturation rahul like if bjp has to win 80 out of 80 in uttar pradesh contesting all of them bjp wins 29 out of 29 in mps uh, and madhya pradesh 26 out of 26 they already did 26 out of 26 it says it is going to contest in maharashtra 25 out of 25 they have already done karnataka 25 out of 25 there was that is the max that they are going to contest leaving three seats for janata dal secular over there bihar this i we don't know if they are going to contest more than 17 but let's say 17 out of 17 jharkhand 14 out of 14 assam 12 they are going to contest 12 out of 12 chatisgarh 11 haryana delhi uttarakhand himachal arunachal manipur tripura jammu not talking kashmir jammu only region goa nagaland chandigarh ladakh andaman dadra daman and deep these are the seats which have 307 seats and suppose if bjp wins 100% of the strike rate that they are contesting on they get 307 now in the remaining seats rahul the places which are left out from that bjp has right now 32 seats they need approximately 31 more but for that you know what is the strike rate they are looking for in many of the improbable states which are look, uh, remaining west bengal they need to almost like 30 seats lok sabha in west bengal in odisha they need to win 21 out of 21 leaving nothing to bjd in telangana they need telangana they need to double from 4 to 8 you know and so on and so forth so obviously these i will not say these are impossible tasks these are imp improbable probably at this point of time looks very tough keeping in mind they need to sweep 100% in everything which we mentioned so far as they are saturation no but rohan gupta here's the problem the problem with mahol the problem with belief you know i take for example baseball uh the english cricket team of late has been believing it can chase down impossible uh, scores 400 runs in the last uh, day say you got uh, 60 70 overs to go they think they can chase it down because they play like they're playing a t20 or a 50 over match and very often we've seen they've pulled out improbable victories if you just look at the number of runs left wickets overs you'd say it's impossible but they've just gone in with belief the problem is when because they're going in with that belief and the opposition starts to think oh my god they've done it in this match they've done it in that match they may be able to do it again that again is a problem you know the the british cricket team 
bats in a way that the BJP wants to bat. They don't think there is any target that they can't chase down. And it's actually a self-perpetuating kind of prophecy, right? They believe, they act, the opposition starts believing, oh, God knows, ho sakta hai, char so aajai, teen so tarai. They start pulling back and the whole thing kind of then becomes a self-perpetuating kind of prophecy. Rahul, first of all, it is your belief and the way you have given example of England, at the end of the day, India won the match, right? So perceptions don't matter. What I'm not matters talking is about this match, Rahul, bhai. I'm talking about no, just their approach to cricket. I am talking, that's what I am saying. I agree with you. I am, I am going with your example only that at the end of the day, perception, whatever it is, if English, we, England, uh, you know, betted in certain way, at the end of the day, India won it. My point is different here. You gave example of, uh, I think Yashwan Deshmukh gave example of different uh, states. Let me go back to the states like Karnataka, Telangana, Maharashtra, Bihar, Bengal. These are the states BJP did very well last time. I don't see they are anywhere close to the even last year's number. So I don't understand when they are talking about in air that will get this number. When you are going to be deficit at least in five states, at least you have to recoup this number from other states where you already at hundred percent. So I think that you will increase the seat, will plus kar denge, kya kar denge. So it's in all air. Yeah, they are good. They are good in building perception, but in ground it's not correct. And let me tell you one thing. It is because of the India block, BJP got jittery. If BJP was so confident, why did they need to bring their own face to the JDU? On the same debate, I have heard BJP spokesperson, including Sanju Verma, speaking that we don't need to bring our own face to the JDU. So, we will win all the cities. If the truth of BJP's perception is with the tally, Rahul, they wouldn't have pulled back JDU. They wouldn't have been after other parties in uh, Maharashtra. This is the ground. No, but if the JDU was so important, <laughs> you wouldn't have let them go. You would have found a way of accommodating them. Here, here's the point. No, here, here's the point I wish to make that the BJP at this time, despite operating Amitabh Tiwari from a position of strength, they're making tactical compromising, compromise wherever they think they are weak. For example, in old Mysore, they brought the Janta Dal secular on board. Uh, in Bihar, they have brought the Janta Dal united on board. Wherever they think that, why take a panga, why go it alone, let's bring some ally on board who will make it easier. They could have gone in pumping their chest, thinking they are invincible. They are not being egoistic, they are being practical and they are being smart about it. It is the opposition which because of their egos is not being able to sign up any seat sharing, whether it's in Uttar Pradesh, whether it's in Bihar, whether it's in Maharashtra, Ram, nothing is I known so far. Amitabh Tiwari. I completely don't agree with this. Yes, sir, one state, tell you where the seat sharing will be. What are you disagreeing, disagreeing with? I'm stating facts. Akhilesh Yadav has given you a take it or leave it. In Maharashtra, you haven't been able to distribute seats. They are wiped out in the Hindi hotline, so stop giving the to the party. That is confidence why were because you pronounced in Madhya Pradesh? Pradesh? Why were you wiped out in Chhattisgarh? Okay, one at a time. I can't have both guests speaking at the same time. That's not how I run a debate. Sanjuji, just allow Rohan to respond and respond to the factual point that I'm making that in no state have you been able to distribute seats amongst allies. And we are just a few weeks away from the announcement of polling dates. The BJP is going out one state after another and doing their political campaign. You still don't know who's fighting where. Rahul, first of all, that's why I, I told you, when you talk about BJP, when BJP takes JDU in their fold, you are saying, no, no, wo log itna over confident nahi ho rahe, kar rahe. that is, you cannot have two kind of analysis. You you have to accept the fact that ground level situation is different than what BJP is trying to perceive. I don't agree with the fact that BJP, if they are in strength position, they will compromise even a single seat. The way you are saying that they are regular, do you feel that if they feel that they are going to win Bihar, they will uh, do compromise with JDU? No. Ground level situation is different. There are 180 seats. I have the number of the seats. BJP is very in very difficult situation. Whether it is Karnataka, Telangana, Bihar, Maharashtra, Bengal, where they saw that they see that what is the real situation, and that's why they are after India block. Yeah, India block. It's not that easy, Rahul, because all these parties they have traditionally Rahul, fought I against. Need to come in here. And okay. Together. Okay. And so you made that point. Let Sanju uh, counter that if you thought you were winning Bihar and winning all those 40 seats yourself, you wouldn't have brought JDU back. You're bringing them back because you know you need them to be able to max out. You know, Rahul, let's be very clear. It is not BJP today which is in the dockyard. 
you know, I have done a couple of debates with Rohan Gupta and I remember him telling, Are, hamare paas to netao ki kami nahi hai. You know, we have a problem of plenty. See, we have Nitish Kumar, we have Mamta Banerji, we have M.K. Stalin, we have Rahul Gandhi, we have Malik Arjun Kharge, uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, Lalu Prasad Yadav. And today, Mamta Banerji, their so-called alliance partner, I hope that the alliance is still in, intact. She says the Congress is not in a position to win even 4040 seats. And as far as Nitish Kumar is concerned, I will just say this. Jab Nitish Kumar, aapke saath hai, aapne kaha sab changa si. The moment Nitish Kumar jumped ship and came over to our side, aapne kaha, aray, BJP is insecure. So this kind of stupid narratives don't work. But my most important point is this. Last time, the Congress won 52 seats, Rahul. And 75% of these 52 seats that the Congress won came from two states, particularly Kerala and Tamil Nadu. The question, very humbly I ask you, and I tell you, Rahul, you should be asking is, that the Congress won 155, 15 Lok Sabha seats from Kerala in 2019 with a 37.5% vote share. And while Lok Sabha and Assembly elections are fought on different issues, come 2021, the Congress's vote share in Kerala went up from 37.5% to 39%. But do you know something? This time in Kerala Assembly elections, they got only 41 seats, whereas the left increased its tally from 91 to 99 and Congress's tally fell from 47 okay. to 41. Okay. The Congress needs to answer, how will you manage seats in Kerala? How will you manage seats in Tamil Nadu? Because N.K. Stalin is not in the mood to oblige the Congress anymore. Just give me five uh, minutes more. Is, 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 can you please, is Manikam Tagore going to cede his seat in Virudhanagar? No. Is A. Raja going to cede his seat in Nilgiris? No. Is Karthi Chidambaram going to cede his seat in Sivagangai to the DNK? No. So the point is that, you know, or for that matter, is Kani Mori going to cede her seat in Thutukuri to the okay. Congress? No. Okay. So, so now, Amitabh Tiwari, can the opposition find a way of, no, I won't say reversing the momentum, but can they find a way of building some momentum in their campaign? You know, it's been one way traffic so far. What can be the X factors from here? Because it can't just be one way traffic till the end that one team is scoring all the runs and the other is not being able to score any runs at all. That's typically not how cricket matches or elections go. You win some, you lose some, you hit some shots, you get out a few times. What can change from the opposition's perspective? Amitabh. See, from the opposition's perspective, I think, first of all, they need to get the house in order because that's not what's happening clearly. And all these uh, uh, elections, have to be seen in pockets. See, from the alliance perspective was a non-starter from day one. Because when the Congress contests BJP in 200 odd one-to-one -one contests, there is no reciprocity from regional parties because regional parties do not have a presence in these 190 seats. It's largely Congress. So Congress has to, on a standalone basis, focus on these 190 seats. And on the balance 185 seats, it's up to the regional parties to challenge the BJP. And the narratives here could be different. The narratives here could be different. The narratives may not be common. The narratives for Congress, of course, is to present an alternative. I mean, what, what alternative they are presenting is not yet clearly visible because they have been talking about issues, but how are they going to solve those issues is not clear to the people. Unemployment, price rise, aggregate distress. How will Congress solve it? And at a time when the PM says that he has delivered compared to not only Manmohan Singh's tenor, but he is comparing 10 years with 70 years, sort of a phenomenon. So that is missing. Okay. So the, no, 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 the fact is, some of that might be hyperbole, but how much is the opposition able to counter that? Sandeep Shastri, from your perspective, can something change from the opposition's perspective? Will it be completely one-way traffic or do you think the opposition even now can find some ways of putting out at least some kind of a fight. Rahul, while it may look today that the momentum is with the BJP, uh, sometimes when you go hammer and tongs against someone, they actually could bounce back, they actually could come back. And as Amitabh said, I will take that discussion forward. I think the opposition alliance needs to look at the competition state by state. I think the Congress will have to be large-hearted in conceding to the regional parties. And 
If they are able to strike an alliance, that is only solving half the problem. The other half of the problem is can you ensure a vote transfer? Can you ensure from the allies a vote transfer to the Congress and from the Congress to the others? Okay. I think these are the two issues which the opposition will need to look at. And I think the fact that they are being attacked so strongly can be the most powerful persuasion <laughs> to come back to the Okay. So I'm out of time. As I, I said, Sanjay this week is, laughing, is when we okay. bring out the much anticipated uh, Mood of the Nation opinion poll. Uh, this morning in Parliament, there's a lot of conversation around what are the India Today Mood of the Nation numbers, when are you putting it out. So as I said, Thursday and Friday is when we put out the first set of data for the India Today Mood of the Nation opinion poll. It's a massive coverage because it's the last definitive opinion poll that's coming out before the Lok Sabha election. So it really will set the tone and tenor for uh, what happens from you because everybody gets a number that they can build. Everybody right now has an opinion. You'll get a number based on the hard work and the field work of Yashwant and his team at Seawater which are across the country in the constituencies doing this polling for us. 8th of February we kickstart our coverage so do join Rajdeep and me on India Today as we bring you the Mood of the Nation opinion poll, the last one before the Lok Sabha elections, the 8th of November all day long, 8th, 9th and then Saturday, Sunday. So big coverage planned up. We're going into a quick break right now. When we come back, we'll have a lot more for you. Uh, stay with us, back in a moment. electronic seat by Kohler. Wish everything was this intelligent. Get ready for an immersive journey into the heart of news, politics and insights that matter. Join India Today now on WhatsApp. Scan the QR code. Veda by Kola. Wish everything cared for your skin. Get ready for an immersive journey into the heart of news, politics and insights that matter. Join India Today now on WhatsApp. Scan the QR code. Makes you wish everything was as vibrant. Get ready for an immersive journey into the heart of news, politics and insights that matter. Join India Today now on WhatsApp. Scan the QR code. After Karnataka, now Tamil Nadu and Kerala have joined the fund fight against the centre. The southern states are claiming that there is a bias against them and that North Indian states are being favoured by the central government. The Karnataka Chief Minister will be staging a protest in Delhi tomorrow. Chief Ministers of Kerala and Tamil Nadu will also be coming to the capital for a stir day after. <laughs> The north-south divide narrative has been peaking in the last few months. And now adding fuel to this raging fire is the political face-off over funds. Three southern states, Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu, are bringing their fight against the centre to Delhi. All with one demand to stop discrimination in distribution of funds. 
Let's begin with the Karnataka government's fight against the central government. Chief Minister Siddharamaiah will be leading a mega protest in Delhi on Wednesday where he's appealed to all Karnataka MPs to join the dharna saying this isn't a political fight but one for Karnataka. I request the BJP MPs also participate in the agitation because it is not a struggle between the Congress and the BJP. Our agitation is not against BJP. <laughs> It is against injustices caused to Karnataka state. The BJP has lashed out at the claims of discrimination, calling the fund crunch in Karnataka a result of freebie politics. To cover up his financial uh, mishap, he has now started this bogey and he wants to go to Delhi and uh, um, uh, uh, oppose the uh, government of India policy and he wants to make uh, north against south, uh, uh, center against state. He is fearing a great loss in forthcoming Lok Sabha, so he is doing all these kind of stunts. Meanwhile, in Tamil Nadu too, a political face-off is brewing over funds. Chief Minister Stalin has confirmed he will be part of Kerala's funds agitation against the centre. Tamil Nadu Chief Minister and DMK Chief MK Stalin has stated that his party will extend full support to the Kerala government, which has legally challenged the intervention of the union government in fiscal management of the states. He also added that the DMK leaders will take part in the protests organized by the left government in New Delhi on February 8th against the central government. The issue also resonated in parliament with the DMK and BGP squaring off. Interministerial consultation and committee came to Tamil Nadu gave the report. Tamil Nadu government gave the report. Both reports are before this government. In spite of that, in spite of the assurances as given by the Home Minister in person, when the amount is going to be released, sir, release, the release amount, I think that whether it is going to be matching the amount which was released for Gujarat, Karnataka and other states which was ruled by the BJP. Sir, update, uh, the, the obsolete, there was also a fierce showdown after DMK there. MP T R Balu called Union Minister L. Murugan unfit. Two crores people have Take asylum in the... What is it? What do you mean? Why do you interfere? Please sit down. You don't, you don't have anything. Please sit down. <laughs> Sir, he should know some discipline. You are unfit to be a member of parliament. Yes, yes, yes. You cannot call a, a minister and member unfit. It is unfair. You are a senior member. How can you call him unfit? Uh, DMK always, they don't faith on the social justice. They don't want to uh, updo, uh, downtrodden people to come up. They don't digest that such, such Arundadir community uh, people come up to the politics. They are unable to tolerate that DMK is against the community. The funds showdown that has been brewing for the last many weeks has now taken a complete political turn, particularly after Prime Minister Modi also lashed out at the Congress, accusing the opposition of attempting to spread the north-south divide. Nama Palin, Sigbekagi, Aburdia Hana, Yuatu Aburdia Hana, Utrabarta the Kade, Etskondogi, Kurtarta, Hanstarta Kata, Kanta, Namia Yella, which are going to look at Anya Akta, Namo, Adana Mundan Ningala, Kandestila, and Teltra, Prateka, Rashtruku Kuda, Namo, Bedkena, Idebeka, and Tanuaria Persitiana, Hindi Pradesh Toru, Namele, Herta, the Rain Tilt, and Jokule Arm, the Ishme. अलग देश बनाने की वकालत करते हैं जोड़ने की बातें छोड़ो तोड़ने की कोशिश करी जा रही आपके अंदर क्या पड़ा हुआ है क्या इतने टुकड़े करके अभी भी आपके मन को समाधान नहीं हुआ है देश के इतने टुकड़े कर चुके हो आप और टुकड़े करना चाहते हो कब तक करते रहोगे 
While politics rages on, is there any truth to opposition's claims of discrimination in funds? Or is it now merely a political tool ahead of the elections to target the center? Bureau Report, India Today. Uttarakhand UCC bill was tabled in the State Assembly by Chief Minister Pushkar Dhami today. The bill makes registration of live-in relationships mandatory and also bans polygamy and halala. The bill was presented amid chants of Jai Shri Ram even as Congress MLAs protested. Here are the details on what to expect. <laughs> Uttarakhand Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Dhami tabled the state's proposed uniform civil court bill in the Legislative Assembly on the 6th of February. The bill is revolutionary for all living relations. It is the first such legislation introduced in any Indian state since independence. The bill makes it obligatory for partners to a live-in relationship within a state, whether they are resident of Uttarakhand or not, to submit a statement of live-in relationship to the registrar within whose jurisdiction they are living. The registrar will then conduct a summary inquiry. In case of a minor, parental consent is required. A live-in relationship will not be registered in cases that are when one partner is married or in another relationship. There are varied punishments as well if a couple fails to register. For couples who have been in a living relationship for more than a month and have not submitted the statement, the punishment is imprisonment up to three months or a fine up to rupees 10,000 or both. For couples who make false statements or withhold information, it could land them in jail for three months, a fine of rupees 25,000 or both. Anyone who fails to register a live-in relationship will face a maximum of six months in jail, be fined rupees 25,000 or both. Even a delay in registration by as little as a month will trigger a jail term of up to three months, a fine of rupees 10,000 or both. That is not all. The registrar will have to be informed in case of termination of the relationship that can invite police investigation. Where the registrar feels reasons for the relationship ending are incorrect or suspicious. Parents or guardians of those under 21 will also be informed. In cases of children born in live-in relationships, they will receive legal recognition as legitimate. The Uttarakhand UCC bill ensures that a woman deserted by her live-in partner can claim maintenance, but it does not specify what constitutes desertion. And as much as that it recognizes live-in relationship, it makes it mandatory for the live-in relationship to be registered and where, as and when almost of the same status it has given to the live-in relationship uh, like in marriage you need to take a divorce for its termination over here also you need to submit a statement of termination to the court to be duly registered it does not affect any specific religion uh, and uh, it will only help to bring in more integration the provisions of UCC however won't apply to tribal communities the bill prohibits bigamy or marriages with more than one person. Uttarakhand UCC bill also seeks to ban Islamic practices like halala and iddat that a woman must go through after a divorce or the death of the husband. Uttarakhand is the first state in the country to introduce the bill that looks beyond the complex personal laws of India. Bureau Report, India Today. This is where I wrap up the news track tonight. As I said, Thursday, 6 p.m. is when we start the coverage of the India Today Mood of the Nation opinion polls. So do watch our coverage Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. The biggest, most definitive opinion poll, Mood of the Nation, coming up this weekend. electronic seat by Kohler. Wish everything was this intelligent.
Get ready for an immersive journey into the heart of news, politics and insights that matter. Join India Today now on WhatsApp. Scan the QR code. Sveda by Kola. Wish everything cared for your skin. for an immersive journey into the heart of news, politics and insights that matter. Join India Today now on WhatsApp. Scan the QR code. Cola makes you wish everything was as vibrant. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjthug.com. In politics, everyone has an opinion. But I have the data. Whose stock is rising? Whose graph is falling? Track India's political stock exchange. Unmatched, unmissable data analytics. The only show on News TV where numbers do the talking. India's most credible poll tracker. The political stock exchange with Rahul Kamal only on India Today.